Olá, bem-vindos a mais um episódio da série do My Way. No episódio de hoje, temos a presença da Laura Sogliani e do Marcel Chaves, que vão estar aqui com vocês para falar um pouquinho sobre como é estudar na Alemanha e como funcionam as universidades na Alemanha, que como vocês já puderam ver no, no título do, dessa apresentação, baixíssimo custo. Então vocês vão se surpreender quando a Laura e o Marcel contar o valor das universidades por semestre que vocês vão poder pagar, tá bom? Gente, só para deixar aí claro, eu peço que vocês deixem o microfone de vocês desligados, a câmera desligada e, e aí no final as perguntas vão ser feitas para o Marcel e para a Laura, podem fazer no chat box mesmo, que depois eu leio para os dois, os dois vão responder, tá bom? Uh, a Laura, ela tem graduação de marketing e numa universidade na Espanha e ela também tem uma graduação de espanhol e, e a cultura espanhola numa universidade holandesa, tá bom? Uh, so, thank you very much, Laura, thank you for joining us tonight. <coughs> Oh, no, thank you for, for having me uh, here tonight and thank you for having both of us, Marcel and myself. Uh, so, um, what are we going to talk about today? Me and Marcel uh, work for uh, Gizma, Gizma Business University. I'll tell, uh, Gizma is a university that's based in Germany. And so what I would like to talk to you guys about today is about, first of all, a little bit about Germany, uh, because I know it's, well, it's becoming actually uh, the number one destination among international students worldwide. But I know that in Brazil and here in Latin America, uh, overall, uh, not always it's like the first thing you think about, like if you want to go to study abroad, right? So I'll tell uh, first a little bit about Germany. The advantages that Germany has uh, for international students, the different types uh, of university and the different types, uh, uh, yeah, well, the different types of, of uh, types of universities that we have in Germany. Then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Gizma, about the different uh, products we have, uh, because there are different different types of students. Uh, so we can see which product of Gizma maybe uh, fits best for you. And then Marcel will uh, end uh, our presentation with a really, really interesting option for all those, uh, uh, for all the ones of you that are now listening and maybe say, I do want to go to Germany, but maybe doing uh, a little bit something different than, than study and, and they want to look for a working holiday program. So that's, uh, Marcel will talk about that at the end of this presentation. So uh, let's begin with telling you guys a little bit more about Germany. Germany is a uh, country in your one of the one of the biggest countries in Europe. Uh, it has nowadays a population of uh, 80 or 82 million uh, people like a little bit less than Brazil, but still one of the biggest countries in, in Europe. Um, so what is Germany known about? Uh, Germany, uh, maybe you guys or maybe uh, you guys have heard about Germany and maybe not really about like education. Maybe you heard about German brands like you have. We have a lot of German brands in our day or we see a lot of German brands in our day to day life. Brands as maybe Puma, Adidas, um, Volkswagen, those are all brands, LG, Siemens, all brands that we see in our daily lives and maybe we don't uh, realize that they are connected or linked to Germany. Uh, talking uh, more about specifically about uh, education and then higher education, um, we have a lot of high quality universities in, in Germany. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, I'll talk about that a little bit in the next slide. It's becoming number one destination among uh, international students. Uh, I'll also uh, explain you guys uh, why that is. Uh, it's uh, Europe's number one economy and it's the fourth uh, biggest or largest economy uh, worldwide. So why is Germany becoming our number one uh, destination amongst, amongst uh, international students? 
Uh, well, let's begin uh, because of, uh, there are several reasons. Like, let's begin the first reason and the most important reason is that uh, Germany as of 2013, 13, to, to zero 13, uh, they equalized uh, tuition fees for for uh, uh, for international students. They equalized it like like an international student is nowadays paying exactly the same amount for uh, the public universities as a national student. And what is that amount? It is zero euros, right? Uh, like people in or students uh, that goes to public in universities don't pay tuition fees. They pay like administrative or, or semester tickets, if you want to say it like that. And a semester ticket in a public university costs in between 150 and 300 euros per semester per six months. If we are talking about uh, master uh, bachelor programs, if we talk about master programs, um, you pay around 400 and 800 euros per semester per six months. Uh, okay, well, that's obviously if we compare it to what we um, to what we pay here in Latin America, in Brazil, but uh, also in other Latin American countries, obviously this is really, really cheap. And it's, you pay like uh, this, 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 these low tuition costs for really, really good um, uh, quality of education. Why really good quality of education? Uh, in Germany, you have uh, approximately 480 universities. Uh, so those are public universities, private universities, technical universities, and among those, um, and among those 480 universities, we offer uh, around 20,000 bachelor's, master's, PhDs, uh, etc. So um, at least six, six of those 480 universities rank within the top 100 of best universities worldwide. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking here about a QS ranking, I'm talking about a ranking like Oxford, Yale, Harvard, the best ranked university among these uh, six is the University of Munich. Uh, it's ranked in the 35th uh, place. So uh, the University of Munich is a public university and is competing with number one universities as Oxford, Harvard, like uh, private university, universities, sorry, that cost like about 40,000 US dollars a year. So you're paying uh, like, I don't know, 300 uh, or well, in a year would be 600 euros per, uh, per year uh, and get uh, almost like, depends, like even though like the, the University of, of Munich is really focused on engineering and the University of Harvard obviously is, is a business university, but you are paying like, I don't know, nothing compared to Harvard, right? Also, Germany is a, a really good option for all of you that are looking for option in English, especially in Berlin, because outside of Berlin, it's a little bit more difficult to find. Well, you can find a lot of like in Munich, Frankfurt, a lot of universities that offer programs uh, in English. Those are mostly private universities, obviously. If you want to do a program that it's not in the native language of Germany, uh, then uh, yeah, you pay something additional. But if we are comparing that with uh, the same kind of university that we find in Brazil or here in, in I'm based in Mexico, for example, in Mexico or in wherever, uh, you pay a lot, a lot less. Um, another big and important uh, aspect of, for international students is obviously the possibility to work because, well, we are not studying in our home country, so we need like some other uh, like type of, um, how do you call it, like incomes. So every student that is studying in Germany has the right to work part-time, like 20 hours a week, while they're, they're studying and every student has a post-study work permit uh, of minimum of 18 months. So that's when the things get interested because obviously, uh, like I said, uh, Germany is the number one economy of Europe, number four uh, worldwide. So we have the US, the United States, we have Ch uh, Ch yeah, United States, China, Japan, and then we have Germany. So uh, the wages, the salaries of people that, uh, that graduate like you guys and they want to use this post-study uh, work permit, they're really, really good. They can get up to 40,000 euros uh, a year. 
So that's a really, really good salary, uh, especially if we compare it with salaries we earn here in Latin America. And then besides the tuition cost, uh, Berlin or well, Germany in, in general has a really low cost of living. Like if we compare with other like popular destina destinations in Europe, like the UK or Ireland or France or well, the United States, I don't even want to start there, Australia. So Germany really has a really, really low cost of life. It's even like really hand in hand. It's really hand on hand with Canada. Uh, I know the Canadian dollar is a little bit uh, lower than the Euro, but the cost of living in cities as Vancouver or Toronto, the, those are the two biggest cities in, in Canada, uh, it are really so high because of the uh, taxes they, uh, as, as, well, students, well, not only students, but people have to pay, especially over rents. So uh, it's a really, really student-friendly and international student-friendly environment. And um, recently, uh, Germany introduced this new law uh, uh, they introduced it, uh, they introduced it uh, on the 1st of March, so a little bit before this whole chaos started. And uh, it's, it's a law that's called the Law for Immigration of Professionists. So Germany is looking for professionists, like professionists in like a lot of areas like engineering, uh, IT, uh, data analytics, business intelligence, like a lot of areas. So if you guys are willing, even willing to go to Germany, specialize in one of these areas, your future in Germany is really, really bright because uh, like salaries can get uh, even more than up to more than 40,000 euros a year. And obviously changing uh, your student visa to a work permit will be like a piece of cake. Easy peasy. So, um, what is this, is the current situation, right? Because I can imagine that a lot of students say, okay, but yeah, well, uh, what are we going to do now if uh, I want to go to Germany? Uh, just uh, really quickly here for your information, uh, Germany is one of the um, one of the countries that best managed. Uh, to get over this whole corona or like or manage uh, keep it like keep control over this whole uh, coronavirus situation so actually like a week and a half ago the first high schools uh, reopened the first high school kids went to class uh, like obviously those were kids that as you guys have to graduate because like the the semester uh, started like they didn't change so uh, people well or kids or students needed their uh, high school diplomas uh, as of this week's uh, this week sorry uh, shops reopened our campus we have three campuses of Gizmas. we have one campus in Hanover one campus in Berlin and one in Hamburg our Hamburg campus reopened this week under a blended learning uh, option because obviously uh, until we have an antidote we can go back to uh, normal classes right we have to keep our spaces and we have to put our masks on but this week we reopened um, so at, as of the 15th of June so in week and a half more or less uh, like uh, Germany will reopen the borders with their uh, neighbors like the Netherlands and Belgium and, and Luxembourg and most probably if the situation gets uh, well or remains uh, under control then I think as of July and uh, July August I guess uh, we can uh, we can like they will open the the Schengen zone so we can we will be able to travel again to Germany and especially for you guys for Brazil this is something amazing because you guys don't need to get a visa to travel to Germany you can go visa free and get your residence permit permit within the first three months you get to Germany um, well we talk a, <laughs> I already talked a little bit about this about the um, about uh, the uh, living expenses that uh, a student has. Uh, a lot of people, I know that a lot of people think that Europe is, is, is expensive or Germany is expensive I already said it's really, it's actually really, really, really cheap. Uh, like approximately uh, a student would need like in between 850 and 1,250 euros to 
to survive, if you want to say it like that. Um, there are cities that are cheaper, like Hanover, for example. There are cities that are way more expensive, like Munich, Hamburg. But 850 is a really good, like, um, approximate, like, amount. And Berlin is a uh, is really in between all of the cities. So most of you actually uh, will. Um, most of our Brazilian students that are enrolled with us right now. Uh, I think almost 99% uh, is now in Berlin. Like I think there is one or two in Hanover, literally one or two. No, uh, I don't know. I think uh, most of them really, really like Berlin. And because I think maybe also because Berlin is the city where you can, uh, where they most speak uh, English. I don't know if that's why I, um, but yeah, most of you guys uh, go to Berlin. And it's a really, really amazing city. Besides that, it's like the, the cost of living is not that, not it's, it's cheap. Uh, it's a multicultural city. Uh, it has a new part. It has like this antique part where from the Soviet Union, when, when from the times from the Soviet Union, you have really beautiful cathedrals, but you have a, also really like exciting nightlife. You have the best clubs in Berlin, especially for the ones that love like, uh, techno or house music like it's 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 amazing so um, uh, yeah th this is like uh, like the cost that uh, a student needs more or less uh, to survive in Germany and let's uh, I want to talk to you guys now a little bit more about Gizma itself uh, about the programs that you can do at Gizma and uh, then we um, we go further with the, the working holiday program. So, what uh, what is Gizma? Like I said at the beginning, we are a business university, a business school. We were founded by in uh, in 1999, so about 21 years ago. Um, uh, Berlin was our first campus, and then we opened uh, Hanover, and then the last campus that we opened was Hamburg. Um, we opened, uh, well, or Gizma was founded with it, that, the idea to become one of the best business universities in the world. And nowadays, I think we managed to uh, reach that goal. And how did we reach that goal? We reached that goal uh, through partnerships that we um, established throughout these, uh, these last years. So uh, nowadays, we are a business hub that offers bachelor's and master programs in English uh, through four different partners, through Kingston University, Grenoble, Grenoble Ecole of Management, the University of Law. The University of Law has a business school, so that's what where we partnered up with. And we have an, um, a partnership with Arden, Arden University, uh, University. So three UK schools, uh, one uh, French universities, University, so you get you are will you guys will be able to get a UK or French degree, uh, like quality degrees, uh, but studying in our Berlin campus. Why? Because Berlin obviously has a lot of more uh, advantages, like the work permits, the the salaries, uh, the low cost of living, and the low tuition cost above uh, these other two countries. So that's why we decided to offer these programs in in Berlin, in Germany. So what kind of uh, bachelor and master programs do we offer? We offer bachelor and master programs related to all kinds of areas of business. So like I said, uh, we have programs uh, related to data analytics, business intelligence, finance, um, IT, marketing. We have a strong uh, business and international business uh, management uh, programs, also strategic uh, business management programs. Um, we have, uh, and that is, uh, I think, our top 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 program within this uh, within this uh, within this portfolio is our MBA program. It's a two year uh, program. All of this is in Berlin, so it's our it's a two year program. Uh, that has triple accreditation, like uh, one uh, of the accreditations is the EMBA accreditation and only 2% of all bit of all MBAs have this triple accreditation. EMBA is the associ uh, association for MBAs. So only 2% of all MBAs worldwide have, have, uh, have this um, 
accreditation. So uh, this is uh, the EULA Renewable and Kingston portfolio. And then we have also our Arden uh, portfolio. Our Arden por uh, portfolio is uh, more focused, these are the more the data analytics and the IT programs. So we have also an engineering management pro uh, pro uh, master, then the bachelors are a little bit more divided. We have a tourism bachelor, a healthcare management bachelor that is like, uh, like in these times, maybe a good thing to have. It's not medicine. It's like if you want to, uh, um, I don't know, own your own hospital, then that, that these kind of bachelors are uh, a really good option for you. It's not, it's just not to become a doctor. Uh, but uh, the interesting, uh, interesting thing uh, of Arden is that Arden, uh, yeah, way before this, uh, the whole crisis began, began sorry, um, uh, had already uh, her of his uh, blended learning platform. So Arden is pioneer in this whole uh, blended and online option. So what, what is the idea here uh, of, of Arden that, uh, you, well, obviously while you are in, in Berlin, you can do part of your bachelor or part of your master online, like two days online. Uh, and then two day presential, what does that mean? That you guys will have all the freedom of the world to like, if you want to uh, plan your week, uh, I don't know, uh, the days that you have your online classes, you can do them, uh, I don't know, you can work during the day and then do uh, your bachelor or master in the evening or like vice versa, right? And um, 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 that's, um, yeah, that's, that's about Arden. And uh, the, the, um, this is something that uh, uh, is for all the uh, higher, uh, all our higher education portfolio, sorry. Uh, obviously as these are options that you can, you guys can do in English, um we offer free uh, german classes taking whatever option you uh, see here or or whatever these are not, not even all our options but just a, like a little summary but uh whatever option you do in uh, english uh, we offer you guys free german classes because obviously uh, more uh, and especially for the ones that are thinking well i'm going to stay in germany i want to work in germany like obviously german will be like an important part of your day-to-day -day life Right. And then we come to uh, the program that uh, a lot of students do here in Latin America, because this is the UPP, the University Pathway Program. Uh, this is the program that we um, uh, design because obviously like uh, the uh, business part is not only the only part that you can do in, in, in Germany. As I said, there are four, about 480 universities uh, that offer more than 20,000 programs in, in Germany. And uh, like a lot of uh, public universities, especially public universities, are really strong in, um, in areas as engineering, in sciences, not like uh, sciences like biology, mathematics, uh, all, of the, all of those kind of things. So, um, and more and more students were asking us, yeah, well, but I don't want to do a marketing program. I want to do an engineering program. So we had to come up with another kind of product. And we, um, uh, we designed like five, six years ago, we designed the pathway program. Um, what is the pathway program? Is the product, it, this is the product, product program, sorry, where we first of all teach you guys uh, an academic German because if you want to get to a, a public university, uh, a public university, they teach everything like, okay, 95% of the public university teach their bachelor or their master programs in English, in, sorry, in German. So we have to learn you guys. Uh, the German is, like I said, an academic German because the idea is that you guys, after you're done with the pathway, get into uh, the student colleague or university. I'll uh, explain what the student colleague is. Um, and then uh, you can do your bachelor or master. Uh, student colleague? Student colleague is a uh, foundation year or, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a foundation year that uh, students here in Latin America have to do if they get right out of, out, out of high school. Why did we have to do this uh, foundation year? Because here in Latin America, in Brazil, in Mexico, wherever, we do one or two years less of high school. So there is like this academic gap uh, that 
because obviously if you guys get into college, into college, into university with national students that did a year more and like the level of uh, a lot of things like mathematics is different, like it's too much. So uh, for all those uh, students that uh, get right out of high school and want to do a bachelor program in a university, first they have to do this student college program. So actually the pa our pathway program, like the program from Gizma, we divided program in two. So first, uh, like option A is for you guys, all of you guys that get out of high school and want to do a bachelor and then uh, option B is for the ones that already did university and want to do a master program. So we have those two options. Uh, the ones that do option A, I have to do a student collect. So uh, we prepare you guys in option A, we prepare you with the German classes and then we prepare you to do the student colleague exam. We do, um, we do some math classes and we do the university placement. Like we help you guys apply to these public universities uh, because obviously it's a little bit of different like uh, uh, procedure like applying to a public university than a private university, right? Now we have option B for all of you guys that already did like a university and want to apply to um, uh, to a public university to do a master program. So what do we do in option B? Also the German, academic German, and uh, at the end of uh, option B, we don't prepare you for a student colleague because you guys don't do student colleague in option B. We prepare you to do an official uh, German exam and then we do the same university placement. And the university placement is really like the great added value of a, a pathway program. We are not a regular language school. We are a business university and the university placement is done by the uh, academic director himself. Uh, the one that's in Hanover or in Berlin, it's a direct, like it's a female director, but uh, both of them have uh, like about 20 years experience in the higher education sector, like the national, the German ones. And uh, they can, uh, guys, they can guide you uh, on what are the best you know, universities for you guys, the best options, uh, seeing your academic background and uh, the, uh, the bachelor or master program you want to do, and they help you apply. So your chances to get accepted in a public university increase enormously, like they are really the best. Uh, just, uh, just to give you a quick summary of like the benefits of, uh, of public universities. Well, yeah, it's in German, but the tuition fees are also uh, like a completely different story, right? There are no tuition fees. You guys pay only semester tickets. Um, you guys only pay semester tickets. Like if we are talking about bachelors, those go, these, do, these uh, semester tickets go from 150 until 350 euros per semester more or less depends on the university you apply for and then if we are talking about a master program we are talking about 400 to 800 euros per semester per six months you can work while you are uh, doing um, your master or your bachelor programs and every single student has the right to work a minimum of 18 months after they are done with, a, with the program. So uh, I wanted to guys, uh, I wanted to show you guys a list of uh, some of the universities where uh, several of our ex-alumni are studying right now. This is a short list because obviously, well, I didn't want to uh, like uh, uh, fill like the whole presentation with just uh, university names, but these are uh, some of the uh, universities. Obviously, there is Berlin and Hanover because well, we have our, our campuses in Berlin and Han Hanover. But uh, there are students, our ex students of ours, uh, studying all over the country in in Germany. So uh, yeah, there is there are several uh, a lot a lot of options you guys can uh, can do. So Marcel, if you want to uh, talk about like the last part, like the fourth uh, of our, uh, just one thing, I just wanted to add one little thing here for all of you guys that uh, say, okay, well, uh, well, right now, June, we are in June right now. Uh, we would like already to start because I don't know, I want to get to the, the I don't know, some, uh, the first intake uh, of, uh, I want to try to get, 
I don't know, to the March intake or the September intake, all our uh, programs, uh, well, our, uh, most of our programs are now available online. So if you want to start with the pathway, you can start online. Uh, we have starting um, entry dates every month. And uh, a lot of our Arden and, and EULA programs, they have also the possibility to start online uh, as of this month. So that's it. You go, Marcel. Sorry, just wanted to add. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. Bom, gente, agora vamos dar um pouquinho para o português para confundir a cabeça de vocês, <risos> para praticar já os dois né, de uma vez só. É, para me apresentar melhor, eu sou o Marcel Chaves, representante da Gizmo aqui no Brasil. Um, então, eu cuido de todo esse suporte aí para os estudantes brasileiros, né, daqui do país, para os pais também. Uh, enfim, em contato com a EFID sempre que necessário. Falando um pouquinho sobre o programa de Working Holiday, ele é um programa super legal porque é uma oportunidade para brasileiros que queiram ter uma experiência de, a princípio, curto prazo. Né? Então, se você ainda está incerto, que você não tem certeza que você quer ir para a Alemanha para fazer uma graduação ou uma pós, um, né, por mais tempo, fazer um preparatório, existe essa oportunidade do visto de Working Holiday, que é um programa que foi criado pelo governo alemão para que os brasileiros e algumas outras pouquíssimas nacionalidades tivessem a oportunidade de visitar a Alemanha por até um ano e ter a permissão de trabalhar por até seis meses para facilitar, né, para auxiliar aí na, na questão financeira durante esse período. Então, é um programa muito interessante, tem essa oportunidade de trabalho remunerado por até seis meses e a gente desenvolveu aí algumas coisas legais para acrescentar e melhorar ainda mais a experiência dos brasileiros. Um, Laura, can you go to the next slide or is it just this one, just to confirm? Okay. Um, all right, so amongst the requirements, né, dentro dos, dos, um, do que eles exigem né, que, o, que o estudante brasileiro tenha ou a pessoa brasileira tenha, é estar entre 18 e 30 anos, então é importante ter essa idade na hora de aplicar no máximo 30 anos, precisa de um seguro saúde um, durante o período que vai ficar, então uma cobertura mínima de 30 mil euros, né, que é exigida por mês, um, isso é a cobertura do seguro, tá gente? O valor de seguro é bem mais barato do que isso. É uma cobertura de seguro saúde para esses 12 meses que você vai precisar apresentar no momento da aplicação, você não, precisa, não pode ter participado do programa anteriormente, tem que demonstrar uma, um valor financeiro para se sustentar nos primeiros meses do equivalente a 2.400 euros, precisa de uma carta motivacional e também vai precisar do currículo de vocês, é, tudo elaborado em inglês ou alemão. Tá? Então não é um programa que exige necessariamente uma, uma formação aqui do Brasil, até porque aceita pessoas de 18 anos, mas é claro que quanto mais coisas você fez, até mesmo durante, durante o ensino médio, então alguma oportunidade, algum voluntariado, alguma coisa assim, que acrescenta até mesmo para depois na universidade, isso pode beneficiar vocês no processo. Tá? Então é um visto relativamente fácil de se tirar e, e que tem bastante gente interessada ultimamente, no entanto tem vagas limitadas. Laura, can you go to the next one, please? Um, a Gizma, para vocês entenderem melhor um pouquinho como funciona, a gente tem um centro de carreiras que foi criado, voltado para o pessoal que vai fazer pós-graduação, né, mestrado com a gente lá na Alemanha. Então, um centro de carreiras que tem parceria com empresas locais e que tem o objetivo de fazer com que as pessoas ingressem no mercado de trabalho, né, junta né, ao mesmo tempo que está fazendo o programa de mestrado, por exemplo. A gente vai usar esse centro de carreiras que já existe há muito tempo, que já tem muito conhecimento adquirido, e essas parcerias com essas empresas, por exemplo, e adaptar para o nosso programa de Working Holiday. Então, como que funciona esse programa? Obviamente que para você conseguir um trabalho lá durante esses seis meses no mesmo empregador, é interessante que você tenha aí um conhecimento sobre o mercado de trabalho alemão, que você sabe para onde você pode ir, né, quais os caminhos que você pode tomar para poder aplicar para um trabalho, como você deve se portar numa entrevista, o que é esperado de você como profissional, que muda bastante de país para país. E junto a isso, obviamente que desenvolver o idioma alemão pode facilitar bastante é, na, na sua busca de trabalho. Eles não exigem isso para o visto, mas é claro que as empresas, como são alemãs, vão gostar se você tiver um conhecimento do idioma. Então, basicamente, o programa funciona da seguinte maneira. O brasileiro vai para lá, vai fazer um, né, aulas de alemão com a gente, então, se não tiver nada de alemão, vai fazer o A1 e o A2, por exemplo, e vai ter também uma oportunidade de estágio não remunerado. 
Isso é muito incrível. Então, por exemplo, dentro dessas empresas aí que estou mostrando para vocês na tela, são algumas apenas de muitas que a gente tem parceria que a gente consegue colocar os nossos estudantes dentro dessas empresas para o estágio não remunerado. Obviamente que a gente não consegue dar certeza em qual empresa que vai ser, porque o que a gente vai fazer é proporcionar para vocês uma entrevista de trabalho com uma dessas empresas dentro da área que vocês estão buscando ou dentro da área que esteja disponível no momento. E aí, se vocês forem aceitos, vocês vão poder trabalhar nessa empresa. Caso vocês não sejam aceitos nas três primeiras entrevistas, por exemplo, a gente vai conseguir colocar vocês pelo menos em uma NGO, né? em uma ONG, para que vocês tenham uma experiência no mercado de trabalho alemão e criem também o network, né? que a conexão com outras pessoas é essencial para que você consiga encontrar um trabalho. Caso contrário, você chega na Alemanha totalmente abandonado, sem respaldo nenhum. Então é interessante esse programa porque ele te oferece um respaldo do idioma, um respaldo na procura de emprego, um respaldo na, né? acrescentando uma oportunidade de de estágio e experiência no mercado de trabalho. Então, são várias as vantagens que tem dentro desse programa. É um processo que é um visto que dura um ano, como eu falei para vocês, tem no máximo seis meses que vocês podem trabalhar remunerado. Então, durante esse trabalho remunerado, vocês conseguem recuperar boa parte do investimento que foi feito nos primeiros meses, por exemplo. E, além de tudo, voltam com um currículo muito mais é, elaborado, né? com essa questão do, do estágio que vocês fizeram, do trabalho que vocês tiveram de seis meses, do conhecimento praticamente intermediário do alemão que vocês vão atingir, além de desenvolver ainda mais o inglês de vocês. Então, é um programa que tem muitos, muitos benefícios e que vale muito a pena e por um custo muito baixo. Então, depois, né, até mesmo o Diego pode falar para vocês, a respeito disso, o pessoal da EFID, de forma geral, pode informar vocês, mas é um programa que tem um custo-benefício muito legal por uma experiência de um ano e tem essa ideia de proporcionar para vocês o gostinho do país para que vocês se apaixonem e queiram voltar depois. Então, tem muita oportunidade de emprego, tem muita coisa legal na Alemanha. É um programa oferecido exclusivamente em Berlim, até por ser uma cidade internacional e com mais oportunidade de emprego para estudantes de fora. Então, a gente optou por fazer por lá. E vocês vão estar também inseridos dentro do nosso campus, né? do, do ambiente universitário, com, no meio de estudantes que estão fazendo graduação, que estão fazendo pós-graduação. E isso facilita também na hora de vocês comunicarem. Além, obviamente, da oportunidade de vocês fazerem... É, né, vocês vão ter acesso a palestras e webinars junto com a nossa equipe do Centro de Carreiras voltadas para a preparação do mercado de trabalho, para a cultura do mercado de trabalho na Alemanha, preparação para entrevista, dicas de onde procurar, enfim, uma série de coisas que a gente proporciona para os nossos estudantes para que eles tenham a maior chance possível de conseguir um trabalho durante esses seis meses ah, no mesmo empregador. Então é um programa super legal, eu não vou me prolongar, para a gente já abrir para perguntas e tirar as dúvidas de vocês um, com relação à Alemanha, os programas que são oferecidos e as oportunidades que tem por lá. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, we do have some questions right now. So, what are we going to do is I'm going to ask some questions for Laura and some questions for Marcel. Uh, and then Marcel, we can answer in Portuguese and Laura, of course, in English. Okay. Uh, so, Perfect. Marcel, uh, Julia Vaz, she is one of the students who is uh, in our counseling program. She wants to know more about the preparation for the student who already has a, like a bachelor degree or a university degree in Brazil and going to do a postgraduate or a master in, in Germany. Uh, she said it uh, wasn't a, a bit clear because I think she got confused about the student colleague. If you mm -hmm. can explain okay. more. Claro, yeah, of claro. course. Uh, you, you want to do it in, in Portuguese, Marcel? Maybe it's better. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, então, como que funciona? A Julia, né? Yeah. Julia, como que funciona? O programa, ele é um preparatório para universidades públicas, né? Esse programa de alemão. Para quem já tem uma graduação no Brasil, você pode sim optar por um mestrado, se for dentro da sua área uh, de formação. Né? Então, se você for mudar muito de área, vamos supor que você fez biologia aqui no... Desculpa, gente, meu alarme resolveu tocar. É, se vocês fizeram biologia aqui no Brasil, por exemplo, você quer fazer um mestrado lá na área de arquitetura, por exemplo, isso dificulta um pouquinho o processo, porque a Alemanha é bem consecutiva. Então, caso vocês já tenham se formado aqui no Brasil, se for na mesma área, vocês podem fazer um mestrado. Se for uma área diferente, o indicado é que vocês façam uma outra graduação. Tá? Então, vocês não precisam fazer o Student Colleague, vai ser uma entrada direta para a universidade. 
Então, é um programa, para quem não tem nada de alemão, de 48 semanas, que vai incluir o desenvolvimento do idioma até o nível C1, e no final você ainda vai ter um preparatório de quatro semanas para o teste DAF, né? que é o, o equivalente aí um, ao programa de ao, ao TOEFL ou IELTS que vocês precisam fazer para universidades em inglês. Então, é super interessante porque é um processo relativamente fácil. Mas, para o final do programa, vocês vão começar o processo de application para as universidades, vocês aplicam para a universidade, recebem uma carta condicional dessa universidade que vocês aplicaram, caso vocês sejam aceitos, e aí, no final, você faz o teste DAF e, atingindo o resultado esperado, vocês conseguem ingressar diretamente na universidade sem fazer o Student Colleague. Então, é super interessante isso tanto para mestrado quanto graduação, caso você já tenha sido formada, né? já tenha se formado aqui no Brasil. Fez sentido? Legal. Consegui esclarecer? Legal, mas, Marcelo, e aí as universidades para pós-graduação e mestrado também são em inglês também, né? Então, às vezes, se o estudante não tem ali o alemão extremamente afiado, mas tem um inglês, um IELTS ali de sete, ele pode entrar na universidade, fazer o curso e fazer o alemão em paralelo, certo? É, ele também pode fazer com a gente, isso tem dois caminhos, né? Ele pode fazer um programa, por exemplo, numa universidade privada como a nossa em inglês, existe essa possibilidade de fato, mas caso dentro desses programas né, não tenha algo que a pessoa queira fazer, ela pode optar por um preparatório de alemão para ingressar numa universidade pública, que aí vai ter outras alternativas de cursos, né? como eu falei, de área biológica, de biológicas, uma engenharia, por exemplo, algo nesse sentido, entendeu? Então, são dois caminhos diferentes. Ou ela faz um preparatório de alemão para uma universidade pública para outras áreas, ou ela entra na nossa universidade privada para programas em inglês, como você falou, que se tiver o TOEFL ou o IELTS, ela consegue entrar, né? Seis e meio, normalmente, ali que a gente exige. E aí, a partir disso, ela, ela consegue fazer esse programa. Ok, ok, perfect. Uh, I, I don't know if Julia got any more questions. Just let us know. Uh, Luca, he's asking here, Laura, that's for you. Okay. She, he's asking, he's a Brazilian, but he also got an Italian passport. Oh, does he yes. has does he have any advantage because he got this Italian passport? Yeah, yes, he has. As a matter of fact, because uh, normally, well, uh, Brazil in general doesn't need to do like this whole visa thing uh, before getting to Germany. But when they get to Germany, they do have to open. Uh, or, or show that they are able to uh, provide for themselves for a year. So they can do that uh, through bank statements or they can do that with a block account. If someone has a passport that belongs to the European Union, then they can forget about, about all that. Uh, they just can go to Germany and get like their thingy that they can study and they can also work immediately. So uh, even doing a pathway program. So yeah, obviously that's a, a great, great benefit. Okay. And he also asking about if you guys uh, know any program, how in Germany in general works or if even Isma got this program because he is at university in Brazil right now. But he wants to do, for example, just a, I would say an exchange program for example, one semester in one German university or even Bisma, uh, and then come back to Brazil to complete his Brazilian degree. Is that possible? Um, that's in general a little bit difficult. I know a lot of universities worldwide, they promote these exchange programs, but they are really, really uh, difficult to execute because almost never one university and especially universities here in Latin America and universities in Europe, they don't manage the same accreditation systems. So it's really, really difficult to do just one semester in, in, in a university and then go back and then finish your program. Like it's almost actually almost impossible or you can just do the semester, but you have to see that like as an extra semester because it's almost impossible that when you go back, uh, they can accredit it to your program. So um well for uh, in case of gizma uh, i would recommend if you just want to go a semester you could do like six months of our pathway program or you could do the work and holiday program that's another option uh but just do a semester is really really difficult even for uh, uh universities that have partnerships established then uh like students that apply almost never like meet the requirements because it's really difficult it's really difficult Okay, okay, thank you. Um, yeah. uh, I have another question here. This student, he wants to know about the life around Berlin. 
And Marcel, I think you can talk because you're Brazilian, so maybe you can talk a little bit. Uh, is that the cities around Berlin, which got this public un amazing university in Germany, are they, uh, even though they are small cities, are they cosmopolitan? Are they friendly? Because we are Brazilian, so there any... I know, Latin, yeah. Latin uh, Americans in general. <laughs> yeah. Americans in general. Uh, what do you, what is your comment, uh, Marcel, for, for the, the, the lives around Berlin? <laughs> É, em geral, né, as cidades, quando elas são cidades satélites ou cidades próximas de uma, de uma grande metrópole, acaba que elas têm é, um estilo de vida relativamente semelhante. Né? Então, são pessoas às vezes que querem uma tranquilidade maior e, uma, e um custo de vida relativamente menor morando fora, né, com relação ao aluguel. Por exemplo, se você mora na área central, você acaba pagando bastante. Mas o legal, eu acho que da Alemanha de forma geral é o acesso, né? Então, por exemplo, mesmo você morando um pouquinho mais distante da região central de Berlim, você acaba tendo muita facilidade para você se locomover pelo país todo, praticamente, né? Pelo sistema de transporte público que existe por lá, né? A questão dos trens, ônibus, tudo isso é muito fácil. Eu tenho um amigo, por exemplo, que mora em Frankfurt, ele é alemão, ele mora em Frankfurt, e ele viaja muito o país inteiro, assim, fim de semana, por exemplo. Então, acaba sendo muito interessante a facilidade dele poder fazer as coisas em Berlim se ele morar numa cidade mais satélite, né? Um, mas, é, de fato, acaba que o aluguel é uma grande diferença, né? Sobre o comportamento dos alemães com os brasileiros, obviamente que existe uma diferença cultural entre um e outro, né? A gente, latino-americanos, de, de forma geral, são muito mais... É, calorosos né, no tratamento, muito mais amigos, de abraçar e tudo, enquanto que os alemães são um pouquinho mais europeus, eu diria. Então, eles vão ser mais distantes, de certa forma, mas são extremamente educados, extremamente solícitos, acho que isso que é um ponto importante. O brasileiro ainda tem uma ideia de que alemão é frio, de que alemão é, é né, esquisito e tal, mas a única coisa que eu acho que alemão é, de forma geral, que eu não gosto muito, é que eles são sem graça. Eles não são pessoas muito engraçadas. Eles não têm um humor. Can I add something to that? It's yeah. just, uh, yeah, well, G Germans in general are like that, a little bit more distance and, and cool. But I have to say that Berlin is one of my favorite, like, Europeans. No, yeah, well, of, well, actually one of my favorite capitals in the world because uh, actually the the community is really really multicultural and because obviously yeah. of all the history they have nowadays it's really a city that is open to like uh culture to new things weird things you see a lot of crazy people so in this it's, <laughs> yeah it's 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 really i, I really really love Berlin. it's really yeah, até, até statisticamente falando se não me engano um sexto da população hoje é de pessoas de fora então, você tem uma comunidade internacional muito grande na região de Berlim, até pelo incentivo do governo, né? Tem gente que vai para lá para abrir uma startup, por exemplo. Então, tem, tem diferentes, diferentes razões para que as pessoas vão para Berlim, mas acaba criando essa comunidade internacional, o que facilita a adaptação de qualquer pessoa, de qualquer país, por exemplo. Né? This is very important for you guys to share with us. Uh, you guys have been, been living in Germany, you guys have been there. And, and Marcel and even Laura, they know about Brazil. So it's very important to for Brazilians understand that Germany, uh, it's an amazing country with great opportunities. And as you guys could see, it's not expensive to go to a public universities. So it's, it's no. an amazing opportunity. So thank you to share that. Yeah. Um, I have another question here from Julia. She, she's doing the nutrition, Bachelor of Nutrition here in Brazil. Although okay. she wants to a master or a postgraduate program in business or marketing, she is asking if it is there is any challenge for her to be accepted to do this bachelor's or not. Um, well, uh, it depends on the, on the university, uh, and um, it, it, is your plan doing it right after you're done with the bachelor, or do you want to do uh, work first? It's like most universities, and I, I talk about most public universities, they do ask uh, to have like a bachelor that is 
related to what you did because what is a master program at the end of the day it's like a specialization of what you already know right so a specialized to specialize yourself in something new it's not really like a specialization anymore but uh, you have a way better up if you really do want to do that uh, like a totally different thing uh, I recommend you to apply to one, maybe one of our private options. We have a lot of marketing options, then you have a way better chance. Uh, well, almost secure that you can get accepted. In public universities, it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, but yeah. even though they are not public, the universities in Germany in general are excellent. So even yeah. though it's private universities, amazing. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and Do I think wanna... we, we, we can add the fact that uh, the programs at Gizmo, for example, they are very like um, job focused. So we That's we it. really like prepare the students to you know work and get into the work environment in Germany and get employed as soon as possible. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the career center, for example, that is really really helpful to the students and it gives them all the tools they need to get a job. And so um, I think that's another positive aspect of, of programs that we offer at Gizmo. Yeah, and that, that's actually a really good point you make there because what is the different, be, difference be, uh, between a university as Gizmo, for example, and a, and a public university? The difference is exactly what Marcel says, like a, uh, a university as Gizmo is really focused on the soft skills of students and a public university is really focused on like the investigation part, like the academic part. So obviously there are some uh, careers uh, like some bachelors and masters that uh, like medicine or law that is uh, yeah, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, find like the right fit in a, in a private university. So that's why our engineering, it's a little bit more difficult. So that's why the vast majority of those kind of students go to public university. But uh, like uh, programs as data analytics or business intelligence or marketing, for example, they have a perfect fit with uh, universities as Gizma. And a lot of universities as Gizma even have the name uh, carry the name applied sciences and that is that indicates that the university has this focus on the soft skills of students so okay amazing and then i think uh, marcel and laura you talk a lot about the career department that is my god to help the students mm -hmm. to find um, an internship or even a work after they finish the graduation uh you can correct me guys if i'm wrong but when a student finish for example bachelor program a bachelor degree in germany they got 18 months to work full-time did yeah. that apply yeah. for the masters and postgraduate programs as well yeah yeah for every program and then actually that is that is with your student visa so that is a right you have being still a student if you want to stay in germany then what you have to do if you have like uh, a, uh if the, the 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 company where you uh, where you are working if they want to uh get like uh i don't know how you call it in english uh, a steady work contract like a permanent one sorry a permanent one one so then you can change that visa to work visa and get your permanent residence in, in Germany. So uh, that's if you're ready to stay there, that's uh, Germany is really welcoming international students. Amazing. Um, Louisa, she got a question here. Is Germany a good place to do architecture? Uh, I don't know if she's meant to yeah. for bachelor or master, but if you can talk for both. Of course, Germany is, I think, one of the most amazing places to do architectures, uh, like Germany and Italy, I guess. Those, I think, those are the two best places to do that. We have, and that is especially uh, a bachelor or a master programs, I would definitely recommend to do in a public university with, because they have really, really good universities to do that uh, your grades have to be really good because a lot of uh, it's 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 also like medicine for example it's a bachelor that like a zillion uh, students want to do a year so uh, it depends also on what university you want to apply like if you uh, uh, are willing to apply also to a not so uh, high ranked university then that's no problem at all but yeah definitely it's it's I think one of the best places to study uh, ar architecture so 
Yeah, and in fact, we have a student from Brazil who's into like who got accepted into a public university for oh, architecture amazing. bachelor. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> amazing. I am. Um, yeah, she she was like last semester or the semester before, if I'm not mistaken. But um, she got I think is University of Potsdam, but I'm not. Oh 100% yeah, of course. Sure. Um, but yeah, so we, it's, it's a very, very good program. And I think one interesting thing about German, like Berlin, for example, for those passionate about, uh, architecture is this mix of like old buildings that are really well yeah. built, that has like amazing. hundreds of years, hundred years of age, and then also very modern ones. So I think that mixture that it's just, um, like incredible. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is, That's especially fantastic. Berlin. And for example, for a course as an architect, architecture, is is expensive or is the same price that you showed us? No, no, no. It's if if you go to a public university, then the cost for a bachelor program is in between 150 and 350 euros per semester. It depends on the university. Like I don't know how they calculate their admin, their administrative cost, but it's between that. Yeah, wow. usually, usually the, they calculate with um, regarding like the expenses of the city itself. So if it's a big yeah. city, it's going to be more expensive because it also includes like public transportation for yes, the students. Yes, exactly. So it's like you're paying 300 a semester, but you're also getting free public transportation. So it's, it's just a dream. Too it's cheap. like there's, it's there's all cheap. I can say. <laughs> and to be very honest, even 300 euros per semester is still very cheap, so... Yeah, it's nothing, it's yeah. It's nothing. Not, yeah. It's um, nothing. Especially if you, if you think that uh, when, uh, when you can work, like students have the right to work, uh, in case of Brazilian students, uh, in case of the pathway programs, they can start, well, you can uh, tell a little bit about it, maybe Marcelo in Portuguese, but they can start to work as of the next calendar year when they get to Berlin. Uh, but anyways, my point was that we have some students like uh, one uh, of our BDs that is based in Africa was, I was talking with him like a few days ago, and he said he has two students in Hamburg that are earning up to a 1200 euros uh, per month like obviously that's not like really common but yeah. like a more a common wage would be i think in between like around 800 and 900 euros but well like really like salaries even if it's a part-time job in, in germany are really are really good so uh, so your 300 euro tuition is nothing. <laughs> yeah it's nothing thank you that's fantastic um, another student, Amanda, she's asking, I'd like to know if the universities provide any assistance to international students besides the, uh, the German classes, such as accommodations. Yes. Uh, we do. Like, we do. She means we do. Like, uh, when you study in, 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 in Gizma, uh, obviously, if you, whether you go to Berlin or whether you go to Hanover, obviously, the, the, for the time in, in, in Hanover, Berlin, you can uh get um uh, or hamburg in that case uh we have an accommodation team so we can get you the accommodation like those are student residences and uh well like what what does that cost yeah like it depends a little bit on if you want to be living like glued to the campus or a little bit more far away but and if you want to share or not uh, it's obviously uh, but it's around i don't know three if, if you got a, you get a shared apartment in hanover it costs around i don't know 350 450 euros a month uh, berlin maybe 450 500 something about uh, something around that and uh, obviously, if uh, then you go to a university in Hanover or Berlin, you can easily stay and uh, stay there. But if you go to study to another university in the country, well, then you will have to look for uh, another place. But then at that point of your uh, of your stay, you will speak perfectly German. So that would, what wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And, and as, as you said at the beginning, uh, when you go to the very metropolitan cities is more expensive but yeah you have a yeah. lot of facilities that is not that expensive so it's, yeah. yeah it stays the same um so julia she's asking now laura and marcel <laughs> give me an advice what is the most important thing to be accepted in a public public university in germany 
the grades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's like 95 percent the grades i mean of course yeah. the german language but um besides the german language you need really good grades it depends of course on your program yeah. like where if you want to do like a general program like i don't know like business in a public university for example there are so many options that you can get in with just the average grade but um in case you want like i don't know medicine or nursing or like as Laura mentioned, architecture or psychology, then you really have to have close to 10. <laughs> um, to have higher chances of entering that. Well, um, actually, it's good that you mentioned, like, for example, medicine, if you have uh, uh, grades, like an average of beneath 97 over 100, <laughs> then it's just impossible. It's not just not gonna happen, for example. Yeah, it's, it's pretty but competitive. Business, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, medicine is competitive everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We but the, the good thing is that I feel like the, the, the Germany has a more fair system when it comes to accepting students because in the end of the day, they will look to what you did during high school, right? Like here in Brazil, we have a system of taking a test that takes four to five hours and includes every single subject that is studied during high school, for example, so you can get accepted into a public university that it has a good quality. While in Germany, they will look into your grades. Of course, sometimes you will have, for example, for a master program and in an interview, uh, they will request your CV, a personal statement, but the most important one in the end of the day is what you did during high school, the exactly. grades that you had. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm academic sorry, academic. I'm sorry to mention, but do, uh, thank you for this advice for the high school students, but for example, for the uh, graduate students already in Brazil and that going to, to do master or postgraduate, what is the most important thing to be accepted for a master or a postgraduate? Same That's thing? It's the same. Same it's thing. The same, yeah. same thing. Like uh, grades. Grades like from the degree. Academic background. Okay. And okay. it's obviously it, like it's your academic background and obviously what Marcel said what kind of programs do you what, what kind of program do you want to do like you said like business you have so many options so many universities and also there are some students like I said like the best ranked university public university in Germany is the the Tom Tom Technische Universidad de Munich uh, like if you want to get in that particular university also your grades have to be amazing because like thousands and thousands like national international students want to apply there and it's like applying to harvard and like if you are okay to do the same bachelor or master program in i don't know potsdam for example then that's not problem that's no problem at all like probably yeah that's possible okay yeah okay that's great um i think we are running out of questions so uh, first, I want to thank you, you both, even uh, Laura and Marcel. You know how much I admire and I like you. So thank oh, you. Oh, we to like you as well. To, we love uh, you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> so thank you to be here tonight and talk to to our students. And uh, they're very excited, and I'm very happy for that. So thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for, for thank you, thank you, everyone, for for getting into this. Uh, connecting today. Thank you, Marcel, also. Yeah, have a great evening, guys. Gente, muito obrigado, foi muito bacana hoje a gente conversar e conhecer um pouquinho mais da educação na Alemanha e vocês conhecerem aí como que funciona para para entrar na Alemanha e vocês viram que não é impossível, que é um que são valores ali super tranquilos, né? Não é nada surreal. Então, eu vou pedir se caso de alguém tenha alguma dúvida ou queira saber mais, se aprofundar mais sobre a Alemanha, Podem procurar o pessoal da Efige, que a gente vai colocar vocês aí em contato com esses grandes profissionais da Gizma, que é o Marcel e a Laura, tá bom? Podem nos procurar. Gente, não se esqueçam que semana que vem ainda vamos correr aí com mais episódios do webinar. Semana que vem vamos ter o Henrique falando sobre o portfólio digital, a importância do seu portfólio. Besides that, tirando as notas também, eu acho que é muito importante falar do portfólio, do que você já fez dentro da sua vida e como organizar. Então não percam semana que vem, o Henrique vai estar tá falando isso para vocês. Tá bom? Muito obrigado e boa noite, gente. Boa noite. Tchau, tchau.